Good morning. Um, we'll wait again for the slides. So I guess uh, I could tell you a little fact about me. You probably don't know that my, I started my career at Merit, which is a consortium of state-funded universities in the state of Michigan. And what we got to do was build the National Science Foundation Network, which was a very exciting time. This was the first T1 backbone, which then grew to be a T3 backbone, and it was the predecessor for the internet that we know today. So that's where my roots are. Now I have slides. <laughs> okay, the IANA update. Um, what I'd like to give you a little bit of a highlight on are the registry update, and thanks to Carlos, who gave you an education about what RDAP is, the IPv4 recovered pool, and um, the reverse DNS certificates. This is sort of an announcement so that you'll all be prepared. And then there'll be some other announcements. So as Carlos mentioned earlier, um, the RDAP is a replacement for who is. And it actually is going to be running in parallel with who is for quite a long time. But one of the things that was in the RFC was the IANA considerations. And those considerations are that we were to make sure that we bootstrapped the RDAP process. And as Carlos explained so eloquently earlier, that meant that we made a new column in the registry where um, the RIRs could publish their link to their RDAP services. And I took a different clip from our registry page. I'm sure it's not as big, it, I didn't do as good a job as Carlos did, but you'll see that LACNIC is listed on this one, as well as all the other four RIRs. About the IPv4 recovered um, allocation pool, you may remember that some of the RIRs returned some IPv4 addresses to ICANN. And through the ASO process that we just heard about, there was a global policy that was made that said, how does the IANA functions operator distribute those recovered IPv4 addresses? Well, the way we distribute them is twice a year, there's a distribution from the pool based on the formula in the policy, the global policy. And we just made an allocation on September 1st it was the equivalent of a slash 14 to each RIR equally. And if I go here, you'll see a little snapshot of the registry that shows you what was allocated. I tried to catch some um, LACNIC allocations there. You'll see they're down towards the bottom. I think there's three for this um, address pool. So we do allocations from the recovered pool twice a year. And we do it actually based on a formula. There's no request that comes to my department, the IANA functions operator. It's a formula, and on March 1st and on September 1st, the formula runs, and you all get addresses. So how long will this formula be running? This is a little graph. It's my favorite slide, actually. I love the bubbles. Anyway, so um, you can see from this graph that if we follow the policy as it stands today, we'll be delivering little smaller and smaller blocks of IPv4 addresses to each RIR through 2019. Of course, if you all wanted to change that and give them all out at the same time, I can't make policy, of course, I'm not. You could top off the, the recovered pool that's held by the IANA functions operator, and they could all be gone sooner, as long as it's divisible by five. But this is, right now, based on the formula, that's in the global policy, how long it will take for the recovered pool to run out. So we'll probably have a, a little bit of IPv4 longer than your projections for how much IPv4 LACNIC will have. Whoops, went too far. Uh, no. Okay, the reverse DNS. So the reverse DNS has certificates that will expire in March of 2016. And this is pretty important for you all to know. As of this week, email messages should have gone out to all the registry operators of the five RIRs, letting you know that this is going to happen and requesting that you send us your S uh, CSRs, your certificates, so that we'll be prepared to roll that new certificate. 
this plan and the date was agreed upon with the IANA functions operator and all the registry operators of the RIRs. We discussed this via email months ago. The plan was agreed upon, the schedule was agreed upon with your um, cooperation and collaboration. So this is just a little reminder and hopefully your registry operators have received the email from us letting you know that um, we're hoping you'll be sending us your certificates. So we'll all be prepared for the November 12th date. Another thing that I'd like to announce, which doesn't happen all that often, is that there's an upcoming root server um, change. So the H root server has notified the IANA functions operator that it's going to be changing its IP addresses, both IPv4 and IPv6. This means there'll be changes in the hints file, there'll be some other changes in the database that we maintain, there'll be changes in the root zone database. So this is just information for you, and um, you'll be able to see this change will be affected as of December 1st. Final announcement is that annually we do a customer service survey of the customers of the IANA functions operator, and this means that we send out about 14 surveys to the numbers community. That's to basically your NRO executive team, and to your registry operators because they're the folks that interact immediately with the IANA functions operator that send us requests on your behalf. So those of you who have received your invitation, we certainly would appreciate your feedback. This helps us to know where to focus our efforts on making improvements to our service. And that's all I have to say today. Uh, if you have any questions, I'm still here. No questions? Well, thank you very much.